Okay, welcome back. This is uh, ENG 460, and we're uh, doing our incremental MIPS development or MIPS implementation in BHDL. And in part one, we did a MUX, so we want to kind of finish that up. But over here is the picture. We basically are creating a BHDL component that can either be a 5 input 2 to 1 MUX or a 32 bit input uh, 2 to 1 MUX. And then there's some more MUXs here, here, and here. So there's five MUXs on there. Four of them are 32 bit input output, and one of them is a 5 bit input output. So let's uh, continue on. Last time we developed our MUX, and here it is, MUX. And here is our code. Entity was fairly straightforward, a generic and a port. There is our MUX statement. Well, now what we need to do is create a test bench file. Because anytime you design a component, you need to test it. And then when you're comfortable that it works, uh, then you can just instantiate it in other projects. So let's do that. Let's do project, new source. Okay. And I want to do a test bench. So let's call it TB, and we're testing the MUX. VHDL test bench, TB MUX. Then it says, which component do you want to test? Well, I want to test the MUX. Okay. Next, finish. And now note our Explorer window over here. This was the MUX we developed. Now we have a test bench, and that test bench kind of encapsulates that MUX because it creates an instance of it. So if we go to the test bench file, let's get rid of the comments. Okay. You'll notice in a test bench file, you've got an entity, all right, which is empty. They're always empty. And then you've got a component declaration. Now, this is the 87, BHD 87. You have to declare a component, and then you've got to come down here, and you've got to instantiate it. Well, I don't like using 87 format. I'm going to use 93 format. And in 93 format, I don't need to um, declare that guy. But I do need to modify the syntax. Now I am going to call this instantiation U1 for U1 test. Okay, U1 integrated circuit one test. Now to change the syntax, I have to do entity work dot mux, and then I think this guy. What is this? This is the architecture behavioral. Is that right? Behavioral mux. It's yeah, it's right up here. Just look right here. Behavioral. Yep. Okay. And then inside there, you have the next statement is your port map statement. And then what you have to do is map your variables to your test bench variables. Okay. Now here are my test bench variables, and I like to always prefix those with TB. So let's do that. So I can distinguish between my test bench and my actual real variables. Okay. Um, let's see. We're not going to use a clock, so let's get rid of this. And let's see. The test bench variables are the variables on the right. The ones on the left are the actual component variables. And there you go. So what we've done is we've created a test bench file. We've created these variables to mimic the variables of our component. The variables on the left are the variables of the component. The ones on the right are the variables of the test bench. And we're connecting them through a port map statement when we instantiate an instance of a MUX. And um, it's U1, the name is U1 test. Now it's going to default to a 32 bit input because I didn't override that generic. Okay. So now let's get rid of the clock process because there's no clock process. And then the stem process, that's the one we want to actually test it. So let's get rid of the body of that and kind of write our own. And one thing I like to do. I always like to do this because it um, it allows me to zoom to full view. And yeah, always put that at the end because then it'll just terminate the simulation, and then when I zoom to full view, I'll just see what I've simulated. So, what kind of things do we want to put in our uh, simulation? Well, let's see. Let's come down here. I'll just copy and paste it and talk about it. Let's uh, put this stuff in here. Okay. Okay, now this process doesn't have any things in its sensitivity list, which means it's automatically going to kick off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say on one of the inputs, I'm going to have quad A, quad 5. And on the other inputs, I'm going to have quad 5, quad A. All right. Then I'm going to set mux control to 0 and wait for 100 nanoseconds. Then I'm going to switch mux control to 1 and wait 100 nanoseconds. And then I'm going to switch it back to 0 and wait. And then I'm going to assert. Let's make a... Uh, comment here that this is 32 bit uh, 2 to 1 mux. Okay, Oops, 32 bit. All right. Well, let's see. We need to compile this guy or behavioral check syntax. Okay. That worked. Now, if I select TB mux and I double click 
simulate behavioral model, then you can see what's going on here. Okay, so here's my window. Now notice, this is your test bench. We instantiated an instance called U1Test. Um, these are my test bench variables. Okay. And then if I zoom to full view, you can see what's happening. At this particular point in time, we have quad A, quad 5 on the zero input, quad 5, quad A on the second input, but MUX control is zero, so the zero input is going to get passed to the output, and that's what happens. Then at this point right here, I change my control from 0 to 1, and now quad 5, quad A should appear at the output. And at this point right here, I change the input back to 0, so now quad A, quad 5 should be at the output. So it looks like it works. Okay, I'm good with that. You know, it's a, we've tested it. All right, let's go ahead and close this. Do you want to exit? Yes. Okay. Now let's comment this code out. Okay. Let's see, let's actually comment the selection out. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste it down here. But now what I'm going to do is do a 5-bit 2 to 1 mux. Okay? So I'm going to put 5 bits on there. And let's do 10101. And then here we'll do 01010. Zero, five bits, but we have to do something. We got to modify our instantiation, okay? Because I had a generic over in the entity that defaulted to 32 bits, okay? Well, what I have to do now is, um, yeah, I got to put a generic map statement in here. And I think the way that works is n equal to five, okay? Now, if you go back and look at your MUX, it had N defaulted to 32. Okay. And uh, let's see, now i got to figure out what's wrong with my syntax here. Generic map, I think it's a semicolon there. Yep, there it is. So what I'm doing is when I instantiate an instance of a MUX, calling it U1Test, I'm saying, okay, now make the generic 5, which means if you go back to your definition, it's going to be... 5 minus 1, which is 4 down to 0. 4 down to 0. So it's a 5 input 2 to 1 mux. Let's go back to the test bench file. And now let's simulate things. But now I'm going to use my 5 bit input. Okay. And let's check that guy out and see if that works. All right. So let's select mux. Make sure it checks syntax. Test bench. Check syntax. And then, let's see, select test bench mux and then simulate. Oh, and let's see if we, oops, we got some problems here. All right, let's take a look and see if we can debug these. Okay, we tried to um, simulate and we got a bunch of errors. Well, this is actually a good demo because, you know, we had everything hard-coded for 32, and then I thought, well, wait a minute, I'll just uh, change the mux to 5, 5 input. Well, that works, but you got to do some other stuff. You know, for example, you've hard-coded your test bench variables to 32 bits. So what we can do there is I can create a data type called a constant. And let's call it n, and we'll make it an integer, and we'll set it equal to 5 bits. And then what I can do here is take this guy, Control-C, and I will just say n minus 1 down to here. Okay, n minus 1 there, and what else? n minus 1. Now there's one more error and we'll find out about that, but let's just see what this does. Okay, so it looks like it went away, but in fact there's actually one more error. So now these guys are going to be 4 down to 0, but if you look down in the test bench, when I did a 32-bit, I used this hexadecimal. Well, you got to get rid of that and uh, just do binary now since we only have 5 bits. And when you do that, now it actually should work. So let's do... Um, Behavioral check syntax, test bench, let's check syntax on that. And now let's actually simulate. Okay, so let's see. Um, yeah, and look, um, these guys, if I go radix, binary, there you go, everything's in binary. So at this point right here, I've got 1010 on input 0, 0101 on input 1, and then I've got mux control is 0, which means 1010 is 1 is going to come out. This point right here, 
the input on input 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0 is going to appear at the output. And then when I set control to 0, then the 1, 0, 1, 0, 1 comes out. All right, let's just as a sanity check, see if we can switch back to 32 bits. And how would I do that? Well, I think I would just go up to here, change this guy to 32, and then scroll down to here, make this guy equal to 32. And then on my test bench code, I'd have to uncomment this stuff out, wouldn't I? Yeah, uncomment selection, but then I would want to comment this stuff out because that's the 5 bit stuff. Well, let's see if that works. So there's U1. Okay, test bench. And then let's see, uh, select that, simulate, and now we should be back to the 32 bit. Zoom to full view, and there you go. Yeah. So we've designed a MUX that I could use for either 5 or uh, 32 bit input. Quad 5 or quad A, quad 5, quad 5, quad A, and then quad A, quad 5. And I'm switching 0, 1, 0 on my control. All right. So at that point, yeah, that's good. We're done. We actually came along and we implemented a multiplexer that could be used here, 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 and back here with 5 bits instead of 32. All right, I'm going to stop there and then we'll get another one out here and when I get some more energy. <laughs>